So, YouTube has now started removing videos critical of them, publicly using the same community guidelines in which they state, we encourage free speech and defend everybody's right to express unpopular points of view. There's a reason to silence criticism directed at them. Having long failed to get a response from YouTube over its inability to correct mistakes or offer protection from users being subjected to harassment by such mechanisms as bot voting by a small number, I decided a more direct approach was required. The Achilles heel of YouTube is without question their advertising unit. You must have noticed the progressive spread of ads over YouTube. Given that YouTube is driven by profits, and that they make their profits off of adverts. This is the one channel of communication they cannot afford to make convoluted or intentionally difficult to use. They have to read these emails. It is essential to their financial survival of their profits. I had suggested that people write to YouTube via this mechanism. I timed the release of the video to be about 6 p.m. Friday Pacific Standard Time to coincide with the YouTube staff going home for the weekend. Less than 12 hours later, the video was removed for a community guidelines violations. Bullshit. Let's take a look at those guidelines, shall we, YouTube? Well, it's not porn. It's not drug abuse, gratuitous violence, shocking or disgusting hardly. It's not copyright, otherwise that would have been a DMCA issue. Then we come to the interesting stuff. We encourage free speech and defend everybody's right to express unpopular points of view. We do not permit hate speech, speech which attacks or demeans a group based on their race, ethnic origin, religion, disability, gender, age, veteran status, or sexual orientation, gender identity. Yeah, this is what I mean about the guidelines being so vague that anything could be a violation. But anyway, it's not that. It's certainly not hate speech, and this is certainly a free speech issue. Things like predatory behavior, stalking, threats, harassment, intimidation, invading privacy, revealing others' personal, personal information, and inciting others to commit violent acts or to violate the terms of use are taken very seriously. Anyone caught doing these things may be permanently banned from YouTube. Harassment? No. Nah. This was encouraging users to voice legitimate concern. Personal information? Well, I did include Susie Ryder's name. But then again, this was on the video on her advertised channel. I gave away no information that wasn't the first thing that came up when you typed the information on her YouTube advertised video into Google. In any event, it's not personal information. This is just the contact information for the ad sales director of YouTube. This would be like claiming that asking someone to write to President Hussein at the White House is giving away their personal information. Okay, next. Everybody hates spam. Don't create misleading descriptions, tags, titles, or thumbnails in order to increase your views. Well, right, well it's none of those. It is not okay to post large amounts of untargeted, unwanted, or repetitive content, including comments and private messages. No, no, and no. I did none of these. I did not post large amounts of unwanted or repetitive content, nor is this spam. This was the YouTube community expressing its opinion to YouTube. And yeah, for even suggesting that people commit the crime of letting YouTube know the areas of weakness in their system, they took my video down for violation of community guidelines. I call bullshit on that. This was a communal action targeted at the community organizers. Designed to be effective? Yes, of course. And the fact that YouTube threw their toys out of the pram less than 12 hours after the video was put up shows that it was. Legal? Absolutely. Within the community guidelines? Sure. No. This action would be more akin to a group writing letters to a government about the concerns they have. YouTube's response was the metaphorical equivalent of removing that person's freedom of speech for even suggesting the crime as vile as writing to the government about perceived weaknesses. 
the hypocrisy is further highlighted in that YouTube had no problems whatsoever when it was being used to organize protests against other organizations. However, when the protest was against YouTube itself and targeted the obvious Achilles heel of its advertising department, they threw a hissy fit. So much for all those pious words about we encourage free speech and defend everybody's right to express unpopular points of view. Sure, when I did this I knew it was a calculated risk. I just figured that YouTube regarded its corporate image more highly than to burst into tears and throw its toys out of the pram at the first sign of someone organizing a protest against them. Evidently I made a mistake. So what do we learn from this? Well, firstly, YouTube has shown us that they get real pissy when you write to its advertised channel. The one channel of communication it needs to be clear and easy to use. Secondly, YouTube's guidelines regarding encouraging free speech and defending everybody's right to express unpopular points of view does not extend as far as videos critical of YouTube or suggesting protests against it. Let me just conclude this by listing the second weakness of YouTube just to make it explicitly clear. If you are one of the relatively few who has a, a big channel, then YouTube has you by the balls. You put a lot of work into it and YouTube can shut you down at the flick of a switch. If you have a small channel, and there are millions of you who do, then you have YouTube by the balls. YouTube cannot afford the time to flip millions of switches. In essence, the subscribers and fans are the only real defense of big users against YouTube. In this sense, I thank all those who mirrored the original video. A very good strategy. Further, if you not only download but recode the video, it will not appear as a duplicate and it will not be as easy for YouTube to use automation to remove these videos. Do I have anything to lose by being shut down by YouTube? Of course. If you just take the 30 or so why do people laugh at creationist videos and take into account the fact that they took about two working days on average to make, that's about average. So that's say two months work at an average US salary of let's say for instance $40,000 a year. So that's six to seven thousand dollars worth of work. Do I value the work of this channel? Yeah, sure. I just value free speech more.